Hey you, welcome to chapter 13 of my Dead Space 2 No Damage playthrough on Zealot Difficulty. I am Stud Doogie. This video is the penultimate video in my Dead Space 2 uh, series because I'm going to combine chapter 14 and chapter 15 into a single episode, which is going to be the final episode. So we are at the penultimate moment. I really like that word penultimate, which is why I keep saying penultimate so way back in chapter six which was the chapter where we first met ellie i said that we would get to a moment in chapter 14 where we're going to compare something this is this is it so we're going to let this play out and then we're going to talk about it just remember how ellie reacted to us in chapter six compared to what's about to happen what her reaction is about to be now Support comms. Hey, you gotta be rescued. You bastard. I need you to be rescued. I couldn't save Nicole, but I can save you, Ellie. So, uh, bye. Okay, see, now she was emotionally distraught, she was crying. Back in chapter six, she's like, I don't want to make any friends. You can't trust anybody, blah, blah, blah. So how did we go from cold, distant, and uncaring to being emotionally distraught of being separated from Isaac? Well, it turns out there's a audio log in the game where Ellie was part of a group and everybody died but her. And the last person, which may be a lover or a boyfriend or whatever, sacrificed himself to make sure that she survived so what we have here are two people who need something we have ellie who needs not to be alone and we have isaac who needs to save ellie because he couldn't save nicole so you know i think from a storytelling perspective from a character development perspective both for isaac and for ellie that that was just nicely tied together it was interesting because on my first playthrough, I didn't understand it. I'm like, why in the hell is she so upset? Like, she barely knows this dude. They hadn't spent any real time together. The more, the most amount of time they spent together was in the previous chapter where Isaac was riding on top of the drill that Ellie was driving. All their other interactions has been primarily via their communication devices, the rig. Uh, there was this one little fight scene where she was in the same main area that he was but she was upstairs he was downstairs and it was only for a few minutes so like it didn't click to me like why in blue blazes she would be so upset about this but you know once i played through it a couple more times and i found that audio log it finally clicked now i think we fully understand why he did what he did like i said before he feels the need to save her because he couldn't save Nicole so you know I think that's pretty good story um, story design character development type thing you know well written well acted well executed well done visceral games okay so most of the emotional stuff is we're kind of done with it now it's just gonna be pure murderation there's gonna be a lot of killing in this chapter lots and lots of death i'm gonna be killing a lot of stuff in this chapter um you know it's fascinating we just had an interruption there by tideman and tideman is supposed to be the primary antagonist of the game but he just has not felt threatening in the least in this game and as a matter of fact we're going to get to, uh, by the end of this chapter, there's going to be a moment between Isaac and, and Tideman where, where Tideman just seems pathetic. You know what I mean? I mean, he's well acted. I, I really like the voice work done by whoever the actor is that played him. But uh, he just feels like an inconsequential character in the arc of the story. 
And that's not, that's not good or bad. It just is, in my opinion, twofer, bitches. Um, just a, a it is what it is type thing. So now we're going to use the big guns for the rest of the game. This gun is the most powerful gun in the entire game. It basically just one shots everything. And uh, we're going to use it to good effect uh, here in, the, in this chapter and definitely the final one because this is our boss killer gun. I love the reload animation where you have to turn your head away because all of the steam uh, to get this thing reloaded. And that it has to be charged up. You know, it's, it's, it's a good trade-off, I think. Yeah, I can't get around some stupid rocks. <sighs> anyway, I'm not going to lament the silliness of that moment. After all that badass shooting, I am, I, I'm stumbling over a freaking stone. Now, the enemy spawns in this is really randomized. Uh, sometimes there are more enemies, sometimes there are less. This one, there were a little bit less than... than other run throughs so just be aware if you're using this as a model for your own no damage playthrough don't don't memorize it i mean that should be obvious by now that a lot of these spawns are randomized so it's not so much memorizing but being able to react to when things are different than when you, what you expect okay so there that was a dick joke right there you're surrounded drop your tool put your hands up <laughs> Okay, yes, 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 I'm childish. Get over it. I like dick jokes sometimes. Not all the time. Just every once in a while. But when a dude tells you to drop your tool and put your hands up, <laughs> you, can't, you can't help but think about a dick joke. I'm sorry. It's just the way my mind works. Okay, so we're about to have our introduction to one of the... I, I'm saying one of the coolest now. I, just, I didn't think that way in my first couple playthroughs. So we're going to get our introduction to the Terminator... Necromorph and Terminator Necromorph is the one that cannot be killed. It keeps regenerating. And my puny brain refused at first to believe that he couldn't be killed. And I kept on thinking it was a matter of using the right weapon or shooting it in the right spot. There it goes. It's, it, everything is sprinting along. It's just taking its time. I'm like, yeah, I'm the boss, bitch. I got a gangster lean. This is how I walk. So yeah, my puny brain refused to accept the possibility that he couldn't be killed. And I tried everything. I used every gun in the game trying to kill him. But now that I've had some distance from it, I can appreciate the design of this character because everything else we can kill. So, you know, at this point in the game, just think about it. How many power nodes we would have, how many upgrades we would have, how powerful we would be relative to where we started. How do you up the ante as the designers of this game to give us a challenge? Well, you give us an enemy that we can't kill. And I think that's brilliant. Again, I did not appreciate that <laughs> in my first few playthroughs. As a matter of fact, I was quite pissed about it. Like, why in the fuck would you make an enemy you can't kill, you sons of bitches? Yeah, so. Um, but now that I've had some distance from it and I'm so freaking powerful uh, I got the most powerful gun in the game maxed out it does make sense to have an enemy where your strategy is not to kill it but to avoid avoid it right and that helps continue to maintain tension because if you don't either get out of the way or neutralize it in some way you're gonna get your cap peeled back so nicely done you know it took me a few playthroughs and when I say few playthroughs, it means that when I couldn't kill it, I just reset, you know, save uh, checkpoint restart, go use a different gun, try it again, checkpoint restart. So it was like within one or two playthroughs that I did all these checkpoint restarts um, to try to murder this thing before I, I accepted what I already knew was that he couldn't be ki it couldn't be killed. I love this fight right here. This is one of the more challenging ones when you're doing a no damage playthrough because everything is a split second reaction so notice a couple things i'm going to do here i'm going to wait a beat for him to get close enough and when the reason to also is for this guy to sprint because when he sprints he walks into the stasis field that was set up and it slows them down so the second time 
I shoot into the ground, I'm able to kill him. See, this is an example of what I was talking about before, that when the enemy is too close, your round goes through them instead of hitting him. So I had to stasis him, back up, create some space that could actually hit him. I had to make sure I backed up. If I did not back up, I would die from that. I've died a lot of times before I realized that, you know what, even though it looks safe, it's not even close to being safe. Yeah, so that's an intense little fun fight where you have to have your spacing perfect or you're going to get yourself jacked up. I'd like to see someone do this. I guess you could. I, we require a lot of space. I'm going to say without using uh, the beam gun, but you could use the plasma gun. You just have to use a lot more stasis um, shots to control the, f the, the, control the battlefield. Yeah, I love this little bit right here. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go in this one room where we hear all this like, like hell breaking loose, and it's coming up. Actually, we have a little while to go. We still have. This is a very long chapter. Very long chapter. So we still have a way to go to get to that beat. Yep, shot him in the toe. Missed, but I shall be redeemed. I could have shot him in the legs, but I'm just going to shoot him in the head. Screw him. I got more ammo than God, so who cares? You just got fucked up! This guy's gonna be trying to be cute, like like I don't know he's there. Look at him, you know what I mean? Got your ass. Got set on fire. We get my node. Not that I need it at this stage in the game, but it's there, so why not? I'm telling you, my playthroughs would be so much shorter if I wasn't so focused on loot. Like the first playthrough, that sound that, that we just heard, man, I was like, I thought it was over. No. All right, so time for more killing. There's a lot of killing in this episode, you. So thank you for taking a ride with me. I'm assuming it's my one special person who has watched all these episodes. That's right, Isaac. You will know what to do. Actually, we will. Because he is I and I am him. And you are we with me. It's a team effort, you. It's a team effort. We're going to get this shit done. No damage style. We're going to shoot like a boss. We're going to get a double. Booyah! Because we're that good. We don't play. I am not surprised to see you. Sucks to be you. Took one too many shots, but whatever. Now, I don't know how this shot misses. I just don't understand it. Actually, I do. He just stood up like a fraction of an inch. And it went underneath him. This game is fucking with me. Got to go back and get my loot. One round. Big whoop. But you know what? It's worth it. Because I'm a loot hound. And I embrace it. Don't try to change me. Don't try to change me. I'm blowing up babies, man. That's how sick and twisted I've become. I'm blowing up babies. But babies want to blow me up. So it's all good. Uh, that was boss. Y'all gotta admit. I didn't need to telekinesis it, but I did it. You have to admit that. 
you know what? It's us. It's you and I. We did that. You and I together. In this journey for survival against freaking alien zombies. <laughs> Go back from a loop. You know what's up. 600 credits. The world is ending, but I have to get my 600 credits. You know what? It's not even the freaking world. It's the galaxy. The galaxy is at risk, but I have to go back and get my 600 credits. Because I have to think about the future. You know, what if I want to send, you know, let's say Ellie and I get together. Let's, I'm just assuming. I'm not saying it has to happen. I'm not assuming anything. I am assuming, but we'll pretend. We'll pretend. And let's say Ellie and I get together, and I manage to save the world, and we need to pay for college for our kids. And I let that 600 credit slip, and suddenly they can't afford books. Yep, sucks to be you. You almost had me. So I think I'm justified. My point is, I'm justified in going back and getting that 600 credit. I love this. You think all hell's breaking loose. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. All right, more killing. This is one of those rooms I should be able to get serious numbers of multi-kills, but I just wasn't lucky with how the spawns went. Like, there should be triples and quads and all sorts of cool things. I've done it before because you can shoot the heads off the babies and leave their bodies and then just use them as mines uh, to kill more than one enemy. But in this instance, I'm only going to get one person instead of a whole gank mess of them. Mm-hmm. 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 Suck it. I love how he thinks he has a chance because I'm reloading. I got stasis, bitch. My stasis is on point. You better recognize. Game recognize game. Second. Right in the gut. Mmm. It's, it's a thing of beauty. I got stasis and I'm not afraid to use it. Mm-hmm. You use your sack to blow up your boys. Now here's an example of why I like this game and even though I played it so much it remains interesting because I expect two more enemies to spawn and they don't spawn and prior to this playthrough I would have told you that they always spawn because every other time they spawn but in this particular playthrough the RNG had it such that they don't spawn see me I have the uh, the telekinesis body part ready to shoot them as they climb up but I'm still expecting them to show up no, not this time. Not this time. This is the first time on my many playthroughs where it didn't spawn. So I'm like waiting, waiting like you fuckers are not going to get me. Nope, didn't spawn. So it's one of the things that, that makes doing uh, a no damage playthrough or any playthrough in this game interesting is that even though you think you might know what's going to happen and chances are you're right you know what's going to happen, you still don't really know what's going to happen. All right, phase two of the body count. And these spawns are randomized, so don't assume that they're always going to spawn this way. It changes, because sometimes the sack guy comes out of the left window. Uh, this time he didn't. Again, make sure I back up, create enough space so it doesn't go through him and actually makes contact with him. And so that's what the reason I'm using the stasis. I'm not really into stasis and shoot, stasis and shoot, because that's kind of easy. I don't know how his bile or body juice made it all over here. Yeah, you missed. I know what's up. I know how to handle you. You ain't fooling nobody. He's also a spitter. Nope, suck it. You just got telekinesis to death. Scrub. 
Now, there's this weird thing about that um, that uh, locker where sometimes you can't get the stuff out and you have to telekinesis from the other side. So that's what I'm going to do once I shoot his dumb ass. All right, so we're going to get to a mini boss here and he's about to get his shit fucked up because you got the most powerful gun in the game fully maxed out. And that was kind of the point of spending all the time and energy that we spent earlier in the game. And even now, continuing to break everything and sell everything. and So we can upgrade our, upgrade our gear rather efficiently. So the later stages of the game um, doesn't become overwhelming. Because if we don't upgrade our stuff, this last part of the game can be a real challenge because of all the advanced enemies. You know, all the burnt variants of enemies are more powerful than their non-burnt variants. And this boss would have been a bitch. Two shots and he's dead. Because we're fully upgraded. Look at that. Boom. It's over. So, I think our time was well spent as we went through and we murdered everything and we stomped everything and we face punched everything and we bought everything and we sold everything and we invested all that energy so we can get to these moments of relative ease so much killing I don't know if I show it, but homeboy's crossing the bridge too. There he goes. <laughs> There's nobody on that side. All right, so we're coming up on... Um, towards the end here a little bit there's a there's a huge chunk of um, cinema um, cinematics that's going to come up here pretty soon I really like the sound design and uh, and the cinematic that we're, we're about to hear if you got a, a, a you know a, a home theater system or some deep bass with a subwoofer headphones um, it's just really well done, I think. But then, I'm hard of hearing anyway, so I like loud stuff. Just getting our bullets. We have an insane amount of bullets. I almost saved but I didn't. And so all this time with the javelin, javelin being our primary weapon now, it's really just used to neutralize the boss, the mini boss. Because when you shoot him and then explode it, uh, he loses all his body parts and, uh, and you know, it immobilizes him and he has to regenerate. So... Uh, we save our javelin shots for him and then kill everything else um, with the beast gun. I call it the beast because it's a beast. What? What are they doing? All right, here comes the sound effect. Either turn your volume up or down. This is it. This is when he starts like a bitch. See, right there. Clark, this is not our fault. I'm a bitch. That right there. That, oh, I love that. I love the hell out of that. Yeah, so much for you being an antagonist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that sound, man. It's really good. I 
I also like what they did with Nicole here because you know first she was just an annoyance then she was a threat now she's Isaac's soulmate and savior and she's kind and guiding us to our destiny and then she will become something else again I gotta tell y'all the first time I played this game and I had to do what's about to happen next like that's the sweatiest palm I've ever been in in any game I've ever played trying to get that needle in the eye sweet Jeebus sweet sweet baby Jesus talk about some tense game moment now I know some of y'all are sick and twisted and probably stabbed them in the eye on purpose multiple times just to see it happen but I did not want to screw it up and Lord knows I did and it took me 30 minutes <laughs> I mean I'm being hyperbolic but it took me forever uh, after I screwed it up the first time because I just didn't want to do that again I can do it even faster now even this I just didn't want to have to redo the chapter so I was just like uber cautious with it but in new game plus playthroughs I just nail it easy peasy lemon squeezy it's so gross Nicely done. Come on, y'all can't tell me that's not cool. Tell me, it's co tell me that's not cool. Come on, I, I, I don't believe that. I, I think you are thoroughly convinced that that's pretty darn cool. I like the music. Like the, you know, she's all glowing white and angelic, but the music is telling us a different story. The music is that of a threatening nature. Danger is coming. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Chapter 14. So we're coming to the end of it. Once I get out of this room, I'm going to save and quit. And um, we'll pick it up with the final two chapters in a single episode. See, you up, all his bits fall apart. One more for good measure. So once again, I would like to thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Um, hopefully you've been entertained or educated or some combination of both. For some reason, my clumsy ass can't manage to uh, activate the thing. But we're about to get our node. We're going to save and quit. So I'm going to cut it off here. Thanks again for watching. And I will see you in the next one.